Hello and welcome to this Code Rage 9 Object Pascal session on application tethering for VCL and FireMonkey using Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. My name is Al Manorino and I'm one of the Embarcadero software consultants. For this session we'll look at the features that app tethering provides. You can easily extend your existing Windows VCL and FireMonkey apps to connected devices, sensors, data, and services using application tethering. You can use the Object Pascal XE7 runtime library app tethering components that will give your applications the ability to interact with other applications running either on the same machine or on a remote machine. We'll see how easy it is to auto discover other applications that are using app tethering running either on the same device as your application or on other connected devices. With app tethering your application can publish actions and then other applications can remotely invoke any of the actions on the former application. You can use app tethering to share data between applications. App tethering allows sharing of standard data types and streams and lastly you have the choice to either use Bluetooth or Wi-Fi for your app tethering. So what is app tethering and why use app tethering? Well, devices, gadgets and wearables are changing the way we experience and interact with devices. So apps are no longer standalone but distributed among these devices, gadgets, the cloud and data. So these are the new user experience elements. So today we are surrounded by all of these gadgets and wearables and they can be controlled through the internet or Bluetooth. So we have Bluetooth and Wi-Fi heart rate monitors, security systems, temperature control systems, point of sale systems, lighting systems, Google Glass, etc. Every different type of market has some type of Bluetooth or Wi-Fi enabled device. So for example, a Bluetooth restaurant ordering app changes the traditional way that is still used in restaurants which relies mainly on the waiter to come and take care of the customer's orders. So by creating an alternative system that allows the customers to order using Bluetooth technology on their mobile phones is time and effort savings especially in the rush hours in big restaurants when the waiters are forced to take the orders from a wide range of customers at the same time. This way the customers input their orders onto their mobile phones using Bluetooth. The orders then get sent and confirmed by the main server and enter the order list to be served soon enough. App tethering extends your reach to these gadgets and wearables and your existing VCL and FireMonkey applications. So app tethering opens easy communication between applications, devices, gadgets and wearables and no server is required. So application one can talk to another instance of application one. Now the main concept of app tethering is discovery and connection to companion applications and automatic discovery is important and no configuration is needed so you don't have any configuration hassles. So like we see here on the slide one of the main goals of app tethering is to have companion apps like I can take an existing VCL and FireMonkey desktop app and it can be talking to a different companion device app or even more than one depending on the user role. So it's also important to say that mobile apps do not need to be involved at all. For example, you can make a Windows service that is a receiver from a desktop application running on the same subnet or a different subnet or be Bluetooth connected. An example could be a point of sale system running on various devices talking to the same receiver without needing to implement multiple communications protocols. Another example could be Google Glass app that can control aspects of an existing Windows, VCL or FireMonkey app. The app tethering feature does not depend on a specific transport or protocol and new protocols can be implemented using the app tethering API. 
In XC7, the runtime library provides built-in support for Ethernet or Bluetooth connections between applications on the same local area network or connect to devices in different subnets or devices with completely different IP addresses including applications running on the same device. So there are all kinds of Internet of Things devices that we can now connect to using XC7 and XC7 makes it very easy to implement. So now you can breathe new life into your existing Windows apps by extending your Windows VCL and FireMonkey apps connecting devices, sensors, data and services and the applications you can create are limitless. Let me also mention that XC7 has a new dedicated Bluetooth LE low energy component to work directly with Bluetooth LE that makes it very easy for you to connect to different devices like wearables and gadgets. Now I'm not going to be covering this new Bluetooth LE component in this session but there are other Code Rage 9 sessions you can watch that does cover this new Bluetooth LE component. So the industry in general is embracing app tethering and now you can create apps for your customers for the Internet of Things for devices, gadgets, and wearables. Let me quickly introduce two new XC7 app tethering features. Now, app tethering was first introduced in Rad Studio XE6 in both CBuilder and Delphi, and app tethering created a lot of excitement for both CBuilder and Delphi developers. All developers we spoke with loved the idea of app tethering, but some could not use it in XE6 because their Wi-Fi is on a separate subnet from their wide area network. Now most companies have the same scenario where many times your Wi-Fi is on one subnet and your desktop app is running on a different subnet. So your companion app could not discover the tethering manager on your VCL or FireMonkey desktop computer. Now this is a great enhancement needed for enterprise customers for their enterprise applications. To resolve this limit, the XC7 app tethering functionality has been enhanced with app tethering supports connections outside your subnet. So in the previous XC6 release, the methods to discover remote devices to connect to, auto connect and discover managers used to only look for devices in the same subnet of the local area network where the device running your application was. So as a result, you could not use app tethering to connect devices in different subnets of the same local area network or devices with completely different IP addresses. Now in XC7, both of these functions provide an optional target parameter that you can use to override the default behavior and specify a target IP address or a subnet to search for remote managers. So for example, as we see on this slide, to specify an IP address to search for remote managers, you specify that IP address as the target. So here we have the IP address 192, 168, 127 as our specific target. Or to specify a subnet of IP addresses, you would specify an IP address with zero as the fourth number. So for example, you can specify 192.168.1.0 as the target and your manager will search the 192.168.1 subnet for remote managers. I'm also going to mention that you cannot specify wider subnets. For example, I could not have 192.168.0.0. Uh, that's currently not supported. The second new feature is adding support for Bluetooth tethering in addition to the network Wi-Fi based tethering we had in XE6. In XE7, app tethering works with either Wi-Fi network or Bluetooth and this opens us to many different types of new applications to create. Now the runtime library has a new unit called system.bluetooth and that provides a multi-device API 
to access the Bluetooth features of the device that is running your application. This new unit provides support for both classic Bluetooth and Bluetooth low energy. You can now use app tethering to connect your application using Bluetooth in addition to IP connections. Now it's important to note here is in XC6 if you use network Wi-Fi based application tethering you can easily switch your existing apps to use Bluetooth tethering in XC7. The only change you need to make is to switch the allowed adapters property from network to Bluetooth on your tethering manager. You'll also need to make this change to the tethering manager component on all tethered apps. Now for those of you that are new to app tethering, let me quickly go over these two app tethering components, the tethering manager and the tethering app profile. Now these tethering components follow the Bluetooth profile model. There is a main component and then a profile that implements the functionality. The tethering manager is the component that manages all basic operations such as auto discovering and pairing with other remote managers. The tethering app profile implements the application profile. It's a set of functionality that includes executing remote actions, sharing resources, and sending streams and strings between other paired profiles. Now a manager needs to register a profile to start so you do need to drop both a tethering manager component and a tethering app profile component on your VCL or FireMonkey form and then link both components filling the manager property in the profile component. Now to find other tether applications in the network your app needs to execute either discover managers or auto connect. Now if you're going to use auto connect this starts the automatic connection to remote managers on each registered adapter. The discover managers this starts the discovery of remote managers on each registered adapter. Now for both auto connect and discover managers for communications over the network the automatic timeout is uh, 1.9 seconds for and for communications over classic Bluetooth the automatic timeout depends on the number of paired devices to the manager. On either method you can set a timeout. The default timeout is 1900 milliseconds. So here in the slide I have a two second timeout to search for managers. When the timeout finishes you receive the on end auto connect or the on end managers discovery event in which you receive a list of the discovered remote managers. And then from the list of remote managers you can choose the ones you want to pair with. So now let's take a look at a object Pascal example on how to use app tethering for your VCL or FireMonkey apps using either Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. This is the sample Object Pascal shopping list app located in the RTL tethering folder. Let me first run the app and then we'll look at the code to see how we added app tethering. So this app will manage and update inventory of your warehouse database VCL or FireMonkey desktop application that is tethered to a companion application either over Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. So you can extend your existing VCL or FireMonkey Windows applications to other devices like a mobile client without having to port your entire Windows applications. You can pick the features that make sense for let's say a mobile client and easily interact with your existing Windows, VCL or FireMonkey applications. Now the Windows application is a database application. So each time an item stock is under its minimum stock value, a shopping list is generated and is sent to all of the connected app tethering clients. So I'm now going to click on the connect button of my client to app tether connect to the Windows desktop app. Now on the connect uh, my companion app 
for example, a, a mobile client, it's going to be the client that's going to receive the shopping list. So from here, we can buy 100 units of an item by pressing the button. So for example, uh, you know, Jorge A needs 600 more items. So by clicking the buy 100, the order gets placed and the change gets reflected on the VCL or the FireMonkey desktop app and any other connected clients also. Now let's look into the code and see how we added app tethering to these applications. This is the Rad Studio XC7 Object Pascal Tether Shopping app. Now for both the Windows desktop app and the client companion app, we added the two app tethering components. We have our tethering manager and we have our tethering app profile. Now these tethering components follow the Bluetooth profile model. There is a main component, the manager, and then a profile that implements the functionality. We also add the two tethering components to our client companion app. So here we also have a tethering manager and we have our tethering app profile. Now the tethering manager, this is the component that manages all basic operations such as auto discovering and pairing with other remote managers. The tethering app profile implements the application profile. It's a set of functionality that includes executing remote actions, sharing resources, and sending streams and strings between other paired profiles. Now a manager needs to register a profile to start so that's why you need to drop both a tethering manager and a tethering app profile component onto the form and then you link both components filling the manager property in the profile component. On the tethering manager we have the new allowed adapters property that lets me switch from network Wi-Fi to Bluetooth. So in XC7 app tethering works with either Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. For this application I'm going to use network Wi-Fi but it's great to know I can easily switch from Wi-Fi to Bluetooth just by changing the allowed adapters property. Now to find other tether applications in the network or Bluetooth our client needs to execute the methods auto connect or discover managers. So when I click on my connect button in my case I'm using auto connect. Now you can set a timeout the default is 1900 milliseconds and in XC7 you now have this optional target parameter to specify a specific IP or a subnet to search. In my app I'm specifying a subnet of IP addresses. So I specified my IP address with a 0 as its fourth number. So in my case my manager is going to search 192.168.74 subnet for remote managers. On my auto connect I have a two second timeout and when the timeout finishes you receive either the on end auto connect or the on end managers discovery event and from here you receive your list of the discovered remote managers. And from this list of remote managers, you can choose the ones you want to pair with. For the tethering manager, we added a password. So when you want to make a manager private, you have to fill in the password because if another manager wants to pair with you, it needs to know this password to be able to pair. So if the manager is protected by a password, as in this example, then you're going to receive an event on request manager password with the remote manager identifier and a password variable to fill. So you need to provide the password to be able to pair. Now if the password is wrong, then you get the event on auth error from remote. If the pairing is OK, then you receive the on paired to remote along with the on end auto connect event with all of the profiles found in that manager. And on the remote side, the manager receives on auth error 
from local if the password is wrong and the on paired from local if the password is correct. To repeat quickly on our manager to use the basic app tethering functionality we added the tethering app profile component and we connected that profile to the manager. So now with this you can share data and actions with other profiles. Next you add to the tethering app profile shared actions and or shared resources. Now let's take a look at the VCL database app. So this example use a shared resource. So a shared resource is a container that stores a data value or a stream and its public name that is used in order to be referenced outside. The app profile for our VCL app, our Tether database app, has a shared resource container with a resource name of res shopping list with a res type equal to data and kind is equal to shared. For our client companion app, its tethering manager is using the on end auto connect event to discover managers. So with auto connect, if we find the remote profile, and in this case with the correct password, then we connect to that profile. So on our client app, if we look at its shared resources from the tethering app profile component, we see for its resources, it has a mirror resources container with the same resource name of res shopping list with a res type equal to data. So as we saw before, when we click on the connect button to our client, it's going to call our method auto connect. And after our two second timeout, we are going to get a list of uh, discovered remote profiles. And then we can pick which one we want to pair with. There are two more items I want to show you on this app. So the first one is on our client app. I'm using a list view and on its on button click event, here's where I'm going to send the string by item to our connected tethered app. And then on our connected tethered app, our VCL or our FireMonkey uh, database application, it's going to perform the on resource received event. And this is where we get to add 100 to the product stock value for the item. So now that you have an understanding on how app tethering works, uh, let me quickly bring up the VCL database app and let me bring up the client companion app we've been using. On our client app I click on connect and it does our auto connect searching for two seconds for managers to connect to and then we get our list of discovered managers and we pair with the manager we want to work with and then the client receives the shopping list of items below a minimal uh, stock value and then when we click on the on button click event of our list view on the client it sends the string by item to our connected tethered VCL or FireMonkey desktop app and the on resource received event of our database app adds the 100 items to the product stock value for the item. So that works great. Now I've been showing the client as a Win32 bit client, but from the same code base, I can create a Windows 64 bit client, Android client, iOS device client, iOS simulator client, or a Mac OS 10 client. And they can all connect to our you know, VCL or FireMonkey desktop app and have the same functionality we saw 
by using this uh, Windows 32 bit client. So that's also great. App Dethering Platform Support. The RAD Studio XC7 app dethering feature does not depend on a specific transport or protocol, and new transports and protocols can be implemented using the App Dethering API. The runtime library provides built in support for IP and classic Bluetooth connections. The IP support also includes connecting applications running on the same device. So as we see on this chart, with the exception of no classic Bluetooth connections on iOS, app dethering is supported on the four major platforms, uh, Windows, Mac OS 10, iOS, and Android uh, for both IP and uh, Bluetooth. And for Bluetooth app dethering, I'll remind you that the only change you need to make is to switch the allowed adapters property from network to Bluetooth on your tethering manager component. You will need to make this change to the tethering manager component on all tethered apps. And if you did use network Wi-Fi based application tethering in XC6, you can easily switch your existing apps to use Bluetooth tethering in XC7. Now before running the application to use Bluetooth, you need to ensure that both of your devices are paired. So in my in my example here, I'm using a Nexus 7 tablet that I paired to my MacBook Pro. On my Nexus 7, I selected settings and turned Bluetooth on. I then clicked on Bluetooth and selected to search for my devices. Once my Nexus 7 found my MacBook Pro, I clicked on it to pair my Nexus 7 device to it. My Nexus 7 then also appears in my list of Bluetooth devices on my MacBook Pro. App Dethering Resources. So lastly, for some additional app dethering examples, look at the samples provided in XE7. In this session, I showed you the BD Shopping List app that shows app dethering sharing resources between other paired profiles. The Desktop Cast app, it shows app dethering sending screenshots and actions to other paired profiles. The Media Player app, shows app tethering executing remote actions between other paired profiles and lastly the photo wall app it shows app tethering sending streams between other paired profiles and also look at the doc wiki section on using app tethering for more information on how you can now use app tethering inside of rad studio xe7 this ends this code rage 9 session on object pascal app dethering for VCL and FireMonkey using Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So thank you all for attending. Now let's open up the session to any questions you might have. So here, I'll go through some of these questions here and we'll answer them again here to make sure everybody's got them maybe elaborate on them a little bit. Is there a one-to-one -one relationship or can a single server handle multiple mobile devices? Uh, so yes, yeah, so the, um, I'm getting back to that one. So yes, a, a single server can handle uh, multiple devices and or apps. So uh, this whole concept of, um, of app dethering either over, over Wi-Fi network or Bluetooth. So you could have multiple devices app tethered to a, to a single server and they, they can all communicate with each other. Yeah, and it's really, it's really a peer to peer. There's not really one that's a server or one that's a client. They just, it, 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 make, it makes it. sense conceptually, but the reality is it's not necessarily that way. That's correct. And then, you know, for what, for most, well, for everything I was showing here in this session, when I say Bluetooth, uh, I really mean classic Bluetooth versus the other Bluetooth LE. Yeah. So with classic Bluetooth, you know, at, um, a theoretical number is, you know, the number of connected devices or the number of slaves can maybe get up to about seven. After that, you know, classic Bluetooth just can't deal with it anymore. That's true. That's true. That's true about classic Bluetooth. Um, when will it support IP multicast for discovery in addition to UDP? I'm going to have to defer to you, Jim, for that answer. I Yeah, I don't know that we have any plans to do IP multicast, actually. So, um, But, yeah, it does use UDP now. It Maybe in the future it might have IP multicast. It's hard to say. 
What is what is a, the com- definition of a companion app? Yeah, so uh, uh, so it, somewhere at the end of that presentation, uh, a companion app could be any any of your uh, existing VCL, FireMonkey, iOS, and or Android or you know, Mac OS X uh, apps. So any one of those types of apps, any any one of these multi device apps can be app tethered to uh, to connect to. Uh, Another app dedicated app. Yeah, that's pretty cool and very exciting. Yep, and you could actually you could have a a console application or a a web broker application or whatever you wanted to really could be connected. That's correct. It's really it's in a, the middle there. I mentioned uh, we, sometimes we always refer to these companion apps as mobile apps, but you no know, mobile it doesn't have to be a mobile. It could be a VCL talking to a VCL, FireMonkey talking to FireMonkey. It could be a, a Mac OS X desktop client connected to a you know Android Nexus Seven tablet doing app dethering. So the the combinations are almost limitless. And I've had multiple. Well, you'd mentioned that you can have multiples connected in there. Yeah, you can have one connected to another one, connected to a different one, and it can get pretty interesting. Can allowed adapters be Bluetooth network and both network and Bluetooth, or can you select only one or the other? So for for the pairing, they they have to have the same adapter, right? So both you know either have both you know client or server, we'll call it we'll call it that way. Both both apps have to be either running on the Bluetooth adapter or the network adapter. It asked if we could have more than one tether manager, and you know, actually, I had that same thought, and I don't, I didn't actually test that. I was wondering about that. Yeah, that's, a, that's a great idea. Actually, I like the idea of right since since both apps can only work on either Bluetooth adapter or network adapter, right? If I have I have if I have two managers, and one is and one is connected on network, and the other one's connected on Bluetooth, then I can have multiple profiles. So the question becomes, yeah, that's that's a good question. So I'm going to test that myself, and I'll let you know my results. I know I have an app, and I can't actually. I was just thinking. I think I might have an app that has two managers. No, it has two profiles, but only one manager. That's right. So you know, if you think of the, if you think of the, uh, so you think how we do, you know, the app data and discovery from from. So you know, how the app data and discovery works. So it does a UDP UDP broadcast to uh, it, it broadca- broadcasts a discovery message across ports uh, twenty 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 through twenty forty. And then when that default timeout for the manager discovery period is reached, um, it actually increased. I think at XC6, it was 1,500 milliseconds. Now we bumped it up to 1,900 milliseconds. So then what comes back is you get this. um, So the event handle code is going to display all the uh, tether managers it finds with their IP addresses and their ports and all of their tether profiles. So uh, I have to test this myself to see if I get both their managers returned and all of their profiles and then you you know the user gets to pick which tether manager and which profile you want to use well i think if you you'd want to have you could i don't think you could do it with two network tether manager i think you do a network and a bluetooth manager but then your profiles would only be connected to one or the other so you'd have to have duplicate profiles for each one too yeah it would be interesting uh, i'll we'll have to experiment with that and find out and so then steven asked why you'd want to have more than one profile for a single manager so actually in my situation i had uh, two profiles doing two different things, and so I had one profile that exposed a set of one set of actions, another profile that exposed a different set of actions, and so because I had two different companion apps essentially, and so with one companion app it connected to one profile, and the other companion app connected to a different profile, and that way I could I didn't have to worry about I tried doing it through one profile and it caused problems because the tried to connect and it didn't know if it was the one that could send actions to or not because you're sending it through the one profile. So you didn't know a way of distinguishing that. But by setting two different groups, one one with one group, one with the other group, I was then able to determine which one I could send actions to and which ones I couldn't really easily. And so that made it a breeze to work with. Great. I, you know, I've used actually used this, uh, app tethering in a few apps, and it is, it is such a brilliant technology. I'm a huge fan of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, the, the simplicity of it, right? You yeah. just drop those two components on it, set one property, uh, either use Auto Connect or Discover Managers, and uh, it, it just works. Yeah, exactly. And then you're able to send stuff back and forth. And I know some people are using it in uh, trying to use it for games. And uh, yeah, can the manager inform me when it, it goes to the internet versus subnet, i.e., so it can go from plain text to encrypted? So it's only going to go to the internet if you give it a specific IP address, right? That's correct. That's correct. So we have the option of either, so uh, either auto discovery, 
or discover manager, uh, no parameters. It will look on the same subnet for managers. I can either hard code a specific IP address or I can give it a subnet of addresses to search for. But what gets returned from the uh, on, on manager discovery event is going to be the list of all of these uh, managers it finds with their specific IP addresses and their ports. So you get all that information back plus the, uh, plus the GUIDs of everything it's connecting to. Yeah. Can you change resources for both apps dynamically at runtime from either the client or the server? So it's like changing what resources are being published, for example. So it's right. It's a, it's a property, right? The uh, uh, the adapter the adapter is a property inside of the manager, so that could, that can be set at runtime. Yeah, I haven't tried that, but yeah, it should should be able to. Now Bluetooth is special, right? So before these two apps yeah, you can be paired, that. Yeah. right? You have to make sure that you know they they both paired. Uh, you know, paired by Bluetooth. Like, for example, the, uh, the example I did was uh, before I can get my Nexus 7 tablet client connected to my Mac OS X uh, desktop application, I had to make sure that both of those devices were paired. And then once they were paired, they found each other. Are there any hooks where encryption or compression can be used with tethering? Out of the box, I don't think we provide anything. Um, you could, you could certainly, if you're sending a stream or a stream back and forth, you could certainly do that at the point where you're sending it, but we don't provide a hook for that necessarily. That's correct. That brings up a good point. So the, the example I showed, the, um, um, the, the shopping list, that showed how you can use app tethering to, uh, to send data between clients. Uh, other common uh, functions and methods that we do with app tethering is, uh, as Jim mentioned, we could be sending strings and streams. And I suspect, yeah, easy enough to encrypt and compress them as they're going across the wire. Uh, we can re we can run remote actions, like uh, if you needed to, you know, push if you had a like a media one of the uh, one of the apps we see here, like the media player. Uh, you have this media player running with a with a with a video movie running. Then you can have a an external remote application that can they, they can push the play button or the pause button. Mm -hmm. And that would be that would be how app tethering runs a remote action. You could also send strings between tethered apps. Like if this media player had a volume control button, you could send a string to do the the volume track to move, let's say, a uh, the volume on a track bar when the track bar changes. So those are the common uh, functions you see uh, with these app tethered resources. So to add uh, encryption and compression from sending data and sending streams and sending strings. Yeah, I suspect we can do that also. And the reason there isn't really a hook for it is because the idea behind app tethering is it's, well, the original idea behind app tethering was it was for local area network communications. And so your LAN should already be protected, right? So you should already have, uh, you know, wireless encryption or, you know, ethernet cables or whatever that's protecting your network. And so you don't need to encrypt it over that way. Later, there was added the ability to go to a specific IP address, which gives it the ability to go over the internet, but that's not the intended purpose of uh, tethering to go over the internet. But of course, Correct. as a powerful, flexible technology, there's lots of things you can do that weren't in the original intention for. I guess you could encrypt, uh, encrypt the data beforehand. How can connect and exchange data with a custom Bluetooth device? Well, for, for, cla so for what we saw here, we were using classic Bluetooth. And I, uh, I think, if I can recall, the, the three profiles that we know about and we support are the one was SPP, a serial port profile. The other one was DUN, uh, dial-up networking, and PAN, personal area network. So those are the ones we know about. Now, if you have another custom classic Bluetooth that's not one of those three profiles, uh, it's possible we just haven't tested it yet. So I'm not sure if it will work or not. And then for Bluetooth LE, if you can connect all sorts of stuff with, oh, and then yeah, you can do the classic profile. So yeah, we'll see that's more information on that. Can one use a dynamic DNS address as an IP for tethering? Does it do d domain name reg resolution? I haven't tried that. I have not tried that myself. Um, domain raise, um, you know, for, for Bluetooth, um, Domain. Uh, good question. I don't know what IP for tethering. I know on the Bluetooth side, you can either use the uh, the, the real human device name of the device you're connecting to, like you know, my my MacBook Pro or my Nexus Seven, or it could be the MAC address of the device you're connecting to. So we'll understand those on uh, 
on uh, on Bluetooth, but that's a good question. So I'll, I'll look into that also. It's ideal for warehouse stock taking in a small shop. Simple. Yes, it is. Yes. I'm a big fan too, Peter. <laughs> uh, with regards to changing resources, what I mean is can the client notify the server that it wants to use a different resource? Is there a separate channel to use for management communication and one for data transfer, or would you have to use the same resource for both commands and data transfer with a custom data type that has fields for both? Well, you know, when uh, if it fails, right, when we, when we do the UDP broadcast uh, looking for managers, uh, if it fails and returns nothing, you can then, uh, you know, programmatically tell it to switch adapters or switch subnets or switch IP addresses, so it's programmatically you can do what you're asking for here yeah so jeffrey's posted that it, it only accepts numeric ip addresses that's what i thought i just wasn't sure um okay. but yet do you, as far as everything gets sent between the two once you're connected to communication wise through strings and streams so there's only one channel for communic well there's only one channel per um application uh, or tethering app profile so you have each manager has multiple tethering app profiles. So you could have one app profile for uh, commands, another app profile for data exchange, if you wanted to, for example. And then you have logic code that could move the data between the two. That's correct. Yeah, it's, it, it, like I said earlier, this is one of those technologies that is defined for a fairly simple use case, but there's it's flexible and powerful, so you can certainly expand it and use it in lots of creative ways. Let's see. Two managers should be okay if class is not a singleton. I think you, you, I agree, Nicole. You probably could have two managers. If one was Bluetooth and one was network, if you had two network managers, because one would be using the ports already, the second one wouldn't be able to use the ports. Although you can have two apps, so I don't. I, yeah, it, it might. It might work. The the, it, the issue would be uh, also that you can only have your pro, a profile assigned to one manager. You can't have a profile assigned to two managers. But uh, maybe you could have uh, one profile that changes the profiles of the profiles to different managers. Who knows? Uh, it'd be fun to try. <laughs> yeah, I'm, uh, I'm already writing it down. So that would be my – as soon as the session is over, I'm going to jump into this and try it myself, and I'll let you know the results. Oh, cool. I'm looking forward to it. For testing, can one use 127.001? Uh, yeah, you could probably – yeah, you yeah. should be able to specify. Yeah. The, yeah, if you had two – you had the – two apps running on the same machine, you should be able to do that. I've always just, I've done uh, run two apps on the same machine before and just do auto discovery and they just go for sure. They're like, oh, hey, hi. And then they're ready to go. To positively ID a client, get the Mac of the device. You could do that. You get a, a unique identifier of the device. You can also get the group of the device. There's a few different pieces of information you can get to it. Um, but you could certainly have a, uh, you could send a request and say, hey, what's your Mac address? And then could send it back. So you could certainly do that. Um, or you could have the machine name, any information you wanted to get and send across, you could totally do that. IB, both apps with the same IP address. Yeah, you can have two, you can have multiple apps running on the same, same machine. That's correct. Uh, question about the video component on Android yet? I'm not sure on that yeah, one. The, the media controller not working in Android OS. I'm pretty sure it is working, um, so I'm not sure. That yeah. might be a specific situation or whatnot, but not sure right now. I think the one that we ship with, so in the uh, in the samples we ship with an XC7 under media, or one of the uh, sample mobile snippets or mobile apps. There's a there's a video, there's a video app that can be deployed to uh, Android, iOS, Mac OS 10, and the uh, and the component works fine. But maybe we're just not using this media controller that you you speak of here. Well, thank you, Al, for that session on uh, app tethering for VCL and FireMonkey using both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. My pleasure. A lot, it was a lot of fun doing it. So yeah, take take a look at these samples, and uh, there's, there's really a lot of possibility between app tethering using either Wi-Fi and or Bluetooth uh, to extend your existing VCL and or Fire Monkeys to to new and limitless possibilities. So thank you all for attending, and uh, have a great night. All right, thanks. I'll talk to you later. Bye.